great to see you all here again. And it's so great to see a production like this going off. Let's see if I say the same words in two days. Fingers crossed. The main theme for today will be all about data and AI value creation at scale. So every year when we have this conference, we are thinking about what is the theme of this year? This year, value, 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 value. We must be better at coming closer to value, coming closer to business, of course. I think this is the key trending topic uh, on LinkedIn, as, as an example. At scale, let's add at scale. William Gibson said, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. And I agree, today, the real data and AI brain power in Europe, I think is in this particular room. Thank you for being here. On a more serious note, if we want to deal with data and AI value creation at scale, we must be able to distribute this capability. We must make it more even within our companies, in our countries, in our regions, in society. Now, to talk about data and AI value creation at scale, we have done some work, Mikkel Klingvall together with me in Deradax, to work on an article, and this is the snapshot picture in 10 minutes that you'll see here. But very simple letter. If you follow Moore's law, Metcalf's law, moving on to Kurzweil's law of accelerating returns, technological innovation is accelerating. Innovation pressure is, inno is accelerating. So we need to learn to adapt. And this is the key word for the whole opening. How do we become better at adapting as companies? Adapting beats efficiency moving forward. Now look at this room. Data and AI teams are already adapting. It comes with the game. It comes with working with data and AI because it's such a rapid technological pace. So what we are doing and how we are working and thinking about tech and data, we need to bring broader in our organizations. Now, the key message here today, the key message here is harvest and reuse. If there's one thing I want you to take out of my presentation is the mantra harvest and reuse. Because we believe that's the core mechanisms to deal with adaptation. And ultimately, how do we do that at scale? How do we industrialize adaptation? Let me take two examples. If we look at the evolution of transformers and type of neural network we use in natural language processing as an example of innovation pressure. Google Brain releases their paper, Attention is All You Need at NIPS, 2017. Already 18, the they published the Google language model. 19, they start leveraging BERT in the search engine. And by 2020, Google uses BERT in almost every single English language query. So here we have an innovation cycle from academic paper to commercial widespread use on massive scale in four years. That's the future, and it's accelerating. Let's take another example. Let's take an example of learning to adapt. Let's take the example of how the Swedish language model was created. The Royal Library in Sweden, Kungliga Biblioteket, they started in 19 by making their digital corpus into data. So literally taking all the Swedish written text that we have, and making it into data that can be analyzed. And from here on, they learned and they harvested from Google, open source the BERT model. They adapted it, took it into a Swedish model, and then adapted it over and over and over again, and they could in rapid 
succession release several different variations for different use cases. Today, KB's Swedish language models are downloaded 65,000 times per month. It's the standard Swedish language model for academia or if you want to build commercial products in Swedish with NLP. Now, this is learning to adapt. Adapting what innovation has been somewhere else, taking it home, and then understanding how to use it and bring it to value. This is what innovation will be all about. We need to be able to spot this and adapt it into our normal organization. And this becomes more important than efficiency. Efficiency chasing in the normal game you already have, when you can adapt something completely that reinvents what you're doing. Efficiency in 20% more efficient versus adapting 10x. That's what this game is all about. But how do we adapt at scale? How do we take what KB was doing in a lab and do it as our norm in our enterprises? I really think you should read into Shun Kamui, the futurist, the innovation advisor with several books behind his name, who coined, think big, start small, scale fast. And there's a lot of, he has written quite elaborately around these topics and what this means in reality for innovation, you know, scaling innovation. And this is at the epicenter and the core of what, what the key message is that I want to give you here today. Because when we talk about value creation and we want to do it at scale, we need to recognize and be humble for the ladder of what it means to do value creation in one team. All the way to the customer, but only one team. A startup, we do something great. 10 guys in the garage. You know, Amazon is not 10 guys in the garage anymore. So how do we do value creation within one team and get value out? How do we do so we get value creation, what you have done in one team can be reused in another team? And then how do we do this at enterprise scale? Each step exponentially more difficult. The key mantra for today, harvest and reuse. Can we say it? Harvest, reuse, you say it. Thank you. The mechanisms that we are trying to put some words towards, how do we translate harvest and reuse into meaningful ways of working in our everyday life? This is hard. And we, we say it's a loop of a harvest and reuse loop where you have federation going into navigation, going into orchestration. Let me unpack this. So what we are going for when we say harvest and reuse is ultimately best framed by Isaac Newton when he said in a letter in 1675, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. What it means is he could do his work because he was building, harvesting what others had done before him. And if we truly want to adapt faster in our companies, we need to learn how to adapt whatever open source models or tech that comes from the outside. And then one team makes this happen. How can we adapt and how can we harvest standing on the shoulders of giants? And the more we stand on the giants of each other, the further we can see in the opportunity landscape where to go. This quote also represent what this conference is all about. You go here and we stand on the shoulders of each other. We become a giant by learning from each other. If we look into this and we use the Data Innovation Summit as the example for harvest and reusing, what we have with our different stages here is what Porter would name as the primary activities in a value chain. These primary activities for us is going from data to value. And the whole idea when we cooked up the very first conference 
I, Goran came to me and we were brainstorming. He did the work. I, I gave some ideas. Was the value chain concept. And if you've been here before, we've talked about this before. Now, the tricky part is when we want to turn this into operation and to organization, we have a primary value chain, but then Porter also talks about supporting activities. Ultimately, here we are dealing with how do we capitalize on our value? And more importantly, to some degree, when we talk about data and AI, we need to have mastery. We need to have mastery in each of the different disciplines, and then we need to have mastery in stringing these together, working together. How do we organize this? And in reality, when we go from the stages to start looking at the different presentations out there, what we need to string together to make this work is more like this. This is the real world at home on tactical and operational level, what you're trying to figure out, mastering in, in each of those things, but stringing it together, capitalizing on it. So let's unpack this again. When it comes to the core concept of harvest and reuse, i.e. learning to adapt, we try to simplify the world by looking at this from four key concerns to create value at scale. We need to be able to seize and understand the opportunity. What is the problem we are trying to solve that is worth solving? Internal problems, problems for the customer. How do we flip that into a solution? How do we translate and capitalize on that solution into business? So we can do something great, but the return on investment is shit. Ultimately, if we want to learn to adapt over time, we need to take what is happening in one team and turn that into intellectual capital, a capability that can be reused. We need to take it from human capital in the brains of the team to organizational capital that can be reused. Now, looking at this, I take the first example here, self-managed teams. Typically, we're working from opportunity to solution to business. When we do that very, very focused, it has shown us this is the direct path to value creation with data and AI because it's so complex. The hard part is how to harvest these as capabilities, how to take what the team is doing in the lab and doing it at scale in a large enterprise or in the public sector. What we propose is how to work in this mesh of different tasks. The problem is when you look at this all together, this becomes really messy. All these arrows going in different directions. But by using the core words of federation, navigation, and orchestration, and understanding on tactical level in any company, we need to start sorting in these jobs. The first one, federation. Look at the arrows. They go from business to solution. Who has the responsibility to productize what we have done, to harvest this in order for this to be reused in another part of the company. In simple terms, we have collected some cool data from our ERP systems. We have used this for this purpose. I talk about customer data as an example, right? How many different use cases needs that data? Or I talk about financial data. How many use cases need cost data? All of them typically, if we work with optimization problems and automation problems. So that federation, that task of harvesting and spreading it. The second key task here we call navigation. So literally understanding what we have in terms of intellectual capital to build on, what capabilities do we have, exploring the opportunity landscape within our companies and with our customers, what problems are worth solving, and then translating that to the best investments. That portfolio steering, not in 10 different portfolios in isolation, but holistically, this is navigation. This is hard, but this is super important. It's all about opportunity cost, choosing what to do, and make, basically saying choosing what not to do. The last point here is orchestration for value. So ultimately, when we have chosen where to go, how do we then 
orchestrate from the opportunity, framing the problem to the solution, and then making it into an operating model into business. And this topic is relevant internally, if your offering is in internal, if you're in group finance, or if you're doing something for, for more of a front-end part of the company, versus if you're doing it for a company, a customer, a partner. So in a nutshell, the harvest and reuse loop. Think big, understand the big picture of that we need to master these topics. Start federating, start thinking, doing this adaptability tax. Add money to make sure that the data can be used for other purposes, for the algorithm to be used for other purposes, for the team brain power to be used for other purposes. Put that into some sort of interoperable mesh. Now we have it here. The next topic is how do we turn that into intellectual capital? How do we actually know what we have in our mesh so we can reuse it? Not until you know all the great stuff at the fingertips of the navigators can you use it. And then with that knowledge, understanding the opportunity landscape, how do we invest? And the last bit, orchestration. We have chosen down a path, we're gonna make a, an use case in this, we're gonna make value in this way, we're gonna get results in this way, we're gonna orchestrate cross-functional teams so we can cover the diff different disciplines, and we're gonna reuse our intellectual capital to lower the marginal cost when we go to new opportunity. We're not wanting reinventing the wheel. I don't wanna go back and take the same data over and over and over again from the old same ERP system. We need to be better than that. That is the essence of this presentation. And to sum up, we coined the world in 2019, Dare Legends. And with Dare Legends, literally, federate, navigate, orchestrate. We, as their legends, starting in the operational team, working on the tactical layer, we need to be great at creating value, we need to be great at adapting, and ultimately to do this at scale, harvest and reuse, breaking that down into federating, navigating, and orchestrating. Tomorrow, we will go into, we will start here and continue on more on an organizational level, what that means, but for now, thank you very much for listening to me. And now it's time to kick off with the first keynote presentation. And with us next, we will have Lawrence Maruni from Google coming up next, and he will talk about widening access to AI, building a developer community. So thank you very much for me. I hope you have a great two days. Thank you.